So now we've got a really noisy job, which is uh, chain arrowing. So I wasn't just got started really, because yesterday I put on a little bit of fertilizer just for the early grazing, real cheap really, just literally one bag. But when uh, they delivered it, one bag had um, got a split in it and they set it inside another bag, so it wasn't really sealed anyway. But it did appear to be more or less all there. It did what, what I expected it to do. It's actually, it's only just dry enough for this, although these, these fields here by the uh, farm certainly are dry enough. Some of the others aren't yet. We have uh, three fields of cooter cut for here up, up by the moor and uh, the top of those will be dry but the bottom bit won't be because it changes to a, a strong clay at the bottom. But uh, for now the main thing is to do these stylish fields because there's a few patches of mole hills, they aren't too bad. But uh, as much as anything you really want to be watching out for the odd stone or metal tine or something that's been thrown out with muck. And uh, if you come to it, it's a good relief to know so it's not repair any bits of wall that are down. Not that there are any in this field. Uh, the one at the far side have already put that, a few stones back on that. The cows always knock off. It's a queer job, really. It's, uh, well, not everybody bothers with it. What you could do alternatively is just roll it. It's coming noisy, I know that. I'll just shut this temporarily. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to shut it anyway. I lifted them up at the moment, so they're quieter anyway. We did, uh, a couple of years ago, my original set. You can't hear them now, can you? Because the black wind is just... Anyway, my original set, they started falling to bits. First you just lost an odd bit off, and then another bit, and then another bit, and it was obvious that they were just knackered really, you can't do much, you could, you could fix the odd bit that first came off. And so we trade, well, I did, I did bought a new new set basically. They're a little bit wider these. And they've got uh, hydraulic rams open and close them, which is the best thing ever. Because um, the year when I uh, decided to buy these. I'd had problems with my back though that winter and um, although it didn't literally go when I was doing it, folding them up, it definitely didn't do it any good and then a day or two after that I had to catch the sheep and then it, it went again and not as bad as the first time. So that was just three years ago now. Since then, surprisingly, I haven't had a major problem with my back, but it's uh, not quite right all the time. It lets me know if I'm doing things I shouldn't. And it's it's not like just a backache. It's hard to describe. It feels a bit like knives digging in you at the time. It sounds uh, automatic really, but it's uh, it's not something you can <coughs> you can put up with. You know, like oh my back's a bit achy because it isn't an ache. It's like a real vicious stabby pain if it starts to say, yeah, you're not to do that. Anyway, this um, grass field here, this half of it that I'm on at the moment was at Surrey on in December and the other half further across was done in February. We had a major session, I've done most of the size ground. But there is still a bit more to do actually, where so I have some uh, of last year's lambs. I took a load on mon last Monday, four days ago, and. There's a, there's a handful left there, but they'd be all right. I can put Surrey there now. They can, the, the ones that are the left there, they can just sit around the outside, and I, I probably won't get it all done anyway. It's like half a mile or more away, they'll cross the, behind the village. Plus, uh, we've had quite a bit of rain since that was done. 
until the, the slurry apples on first it got nicely washed in and uh, it's really greening it up quite well and the good thing with the rain is that actually I was having a, tr a job mixing it all in in the pit there was a pile where I've been pushing it in especially when it's been frosty or very dry and it sort of piles up where you push it in and I couldn't quite get that stirred in before and I think I will do now though because the, the pit level's gone up by at least two feet just from all the water on the rain we've had um, about 72 millimetres this March where the average is around 52 or 50 but anyway March is usually one of our driest months It's actually quite predictable, really, the, um, the drier months are surprisingly February, March, April and May. There isn't really much to choose between them, but March and April tie for the driest. The other months, you see, they can go a bit either way. It might be like 13 millimetres or it might be 130. It's um, May and especially June can turn quite thundery and stormy even. I wouldn't really think of May being a stormy one. But uh, June it obviously again it's, it's the first summer month but it can be rather unstable and unsettled and uh, when it does rain there's a lot more energy in the system than in the winter it can be very very wet. And sometimes you get like 40 millimetres in one day or something. Anyway the average over the past 10 years. February, March, April, May, they're all much the same really. Then you get a, a slight peak in the summer, which again it's uh, more thundery type events really, which although you might easily go the whole year or the whole month without having a thundery spell, when you do get one it can be very very wet you know, over a day or two, because sometimes not just like one storm, like a stormy spell. Originally I had thought that I had plenty, but uh, now I'm not so sure. I've got uh, a good four weeks of plant left, probably more like six to be honest, but certainly four or five, and well, that takes us almost the end of April. And then I've got, uh, I don't know the exact number of bales, but there's there's enough to you to give them to, uh, bale to two days and then the third day they can have a bale of hay or two bales of hay but um, I know they're not too keen on these last few bales as I left because they're from a rough old field it's mostly like Yorkshire fog so they may in fact with some of them left if they only had one every other day or something instead of I guess they just don't quite finish it off but the, the least is if there's nothing else because the plant's gone. This is the problem really, you don't know what, what it will do, no one knows. It wouldn't be the first time we had to keep them in until the second week of May. Even if they have sort of gone out briefly before, that's, that's unusual. But uh, in recent years, the turnout days has almost always been in, in the first week of May, so it's around the third or the fourth. Whereas uh, in the 70s and 80s we had milking cows so they were a bit less sort of ravenous <laughs> because we had dairy nuts and things. But they would get let out often around about the 25th of April. I think my all time earliest was about the 10th because we had a reseeded field just below the road here and uh, grew away like crazy and we were a bit short of uh, feed as well so I thought we'd just let them out and uh, raise that off. So in, the, in the past we used to, in the 70s we used to have um, raising rye which was sowed in the autumn and uh, you made a special effort to put a bit of fertiliser on about now get it growing and that would normally be quite, quite a good size by middle of April and the only issue was because you get to it if it was dry enough. So he wanted it on a nearby field. 
But then the, the worst thing about it was that uh, then you had this big hard dry field, which we used to attempt to sow with kale, and it never really worked very well. And after the kale, you would sow it back to either barley or grass again. Our way to do well. This morning we had a dead sheep, which I actually haven't even picked it up yet. I think that's uh, been about two weeks off lambing, and uh, I guess it's very heavy in lamb. And one of them, I, I assume she's prolapsed and then kept on pushing. She pushed all her uh, intestines out, and she was literally dead. I mean, uh, I have seen them live for a little while like that, but it's practically impossible to, to do anything for them. I mean, a normal prolapse is bad news, but you can resolve, resolve that. But you can't do anything if they're ruptured themselves and pushed their goods out. So it's not as common, but uh, I haven't had one do that for a year or two, I must say. And I was a bit worried about prolapses this year, because it's quite fat. So I deliberately been keeping them back in the, the grazing where they've been all winter, which is a little bit less lush than where they go to lamb. Normally I would have been letting them throw into there last week or two before. I'll keep them back a bit longer. 